Welcome back to the Blender Frenzy Quarantine Series. I am Justin, as always, your host and teacher and guide today. So far, we have created a toilet paper roll out of a simple cylinder, unwrapped the UVs so we have flat UVs to paint on. Then we use stencils to paint photos onto our object. And so now we have something that looks like this. You can see our final texture map wrapped around our object. So in this video, I want to show you another way that you can paint onto your object, and that is with projection mapping. Now, in the last video, I talked about projection mapping and texture extraction, where you take a piece of a photo and then extract that texture onto a texture map image of your own that's flat and facing you. If you haven't seen that video yet, I highly recommend watching that because it goes in detail through the concepts of how to do uh, projection mapping and texture extraction. I'm going to use those same concepts in this video on our toilet paper, but I'm not going to go into a lot of detail explaining them. So uh, let's go ahead and get started by uh, enabling our overlays and zooming out here to position our camera. So I'm going to Alt R to clear the rotation and Alt G to clear that rotate location and come down here. I'm going to also resize the display. If we go to our properties, scroll down to viewport display, and then I'm going to change this to 6in, which is 6 inches. Now this doesn't change your camera perspective at all. It just changes the viewport display of it, uh, the wireframe here. So rotate that on the X90 and then grab that on the Y, pull that back. Um, I'm going to come over here and we're going to bring our camera up on the Z and then rotate it on the X to look down at our roll of toilet paper. Now you can do all of those same actions if I rotate it on the X like this up and down. Uh, I can go into camera mode as long as my camera is still selected. I can rotate it on the X and move that up and down just like before. And then we're gonna just center this here like that. Now this doesn't have to be accurate because we're gonna move this again soon anyway, but I'm gonna come over to my camera properties again, uh, check background images, add an image, and open up a photograph that I took of some toilet paper on my table. I'm gonna change the alpha to one and then um, I wish it showed me what my original dimensions were, but I know that uh, the dimensions of my image are uh, 4160 by 2340. And then I'm going to come up to my viewport shading, make sure that's solid, and then change the lighting to studio and the color to material. I'm also going to check wireframe mode here. And so now we want to align our cylinder up with the toilet paper in the image, but I don't want to move the actual cylinder. I want to keep this at the world origin. So to do that, what we're going to do is move our camera in reference to the 3D cursor, which is also at the world origin, by coming up here to our pivot point, selecting 3D cursor, and now if I rotate on the X, it's going to rotate on the axis of the 3D cursor. It's also the same way with any transform if I grab on the X or the Y. So that's what we're going to use to position our cylinder with our image. Uh, one more thing too, if I grab the camera with G and then press Z, that goes up and down of course, but if I press Z again, um, it goes backwards and forwards. And so this is going to give us the illusion of scaling. So the closer the camera gets to the object, the bigger it's going to appear to be. Uh, so let's go ahead and go to our camera mode and uh, G, Z, and Z again. And then we move our mouse. You see the camera is actually getting closer to the cylinder, but it looks like it's uh, scaling that cylinder up. And this is what we want because we don't actually want to scale the cylinder. So G, Y, and then you can also hold shift to have a little bit more accuracy and control. G, X, move that over this way. And uh, these are going to be the opposite. So if I move my mouse to the left, it's going to move the cylinder to the right. Uh, because again, I'm moving my camera. So if this isn't working for you, make sure you have your camera selected. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish aligning this how I want. I'm just going to scroll in a little bit so we can see that a little bit better. I'm going to press R and X to rotate on the X to tilt it towards me a little bit to 
kind of match the perspective there. Grab on the Y, move it back a little bit. And I really want to try to line up this edge here, the front edge, because that's the most important right here, because that's the most prominent. So, all right, so the perspective and the alignment look good here like this. Uh, now we want to reshape this so it matches uh, more of our toilet paper roll. But before we do that, we have to change our seam. So if I go into edit mode and then I select solid shading here, then come over here to our overlays and hide our sharps and unhide our seams. And now you can see that the camera is facing the seam like head on directly. So we don't want this. We want to actually rotate everything around 180 degrees. So I'm going to select everything while I'm in edit mode, R, Z, and then 180 to rotate. Now the seam is on the back. Okay, I'm going to go back into wireframe mode here and into vertex select, and we're going to just start moving our vertices around. Um, so I'm going to select, uh, let's do this one down here, and then I'm going to turn on our proportional editing, which is up here, and you can also press O on the keyboard. And as I drag that, you can see this big circle that's around there, and you can see I'm dragging a whole bunch of points. Uh, if I scroll in, it'll shrink that circle of influence to where now only one of them is being affected. But you can see that it's shrinking in towards the 3D cursor. And that is because I still have the 3D cursor as my pivot point. So I'm just gonna change that to median point here now. And now with the selected, press G. And now you can see the circle is around my selection. So I'm just gonna scroll out to make that bigger and make the area of influence bigger and just reposition things like this. Okay, so now that I've repositioned it, it looks fine here, but if I go into front mode by pressing one and I scroll in, you can see I've actually been free moving it, which means I'm moving it on all 3D, three axes, and uh, that means it moved it down. But I don't want it to go down. I want it to stay flat on the surface. So if this happens to you, it's really easy fix. All you have to do is box select all of these here. I'm gonna turn off proportional editing, and then with these selected, I'm gonna press S to scale, Z on the Z axis, and zero. And now they should be flat on that floor plane again. So I'm going to go back into camera mode, and to avoid this, you can actually select a point, uh, press G to grab, oh, let's go back into our proportional editing, G to grab, and then as I'm grabbing, I can press Shift Z to exclude the Z axis, so that it's not going up and down at all, it's just going on our X and Y axes here. I'm going to go ahead and turn off our, our seams display here and zoom in here. And I'm going to finish adjusting these points to our toilet paper image. Okay, so let's take a look and see what we have here. Oh, I got to redo this here. Grab on the Z. I mean, Shift Z. So I press G and then Shift Z because I don't want to move it up and down, but just out a little bit like that. Okay, I think that's good. And you can see I've avoided going all the way to the edges because I don't want the stuff from the background to bleed onto my UVs. And if we go into front mode, you can see if I've done everything correctly, which I have, uh, a lot of times I forget, everything is flat here. But in case you do forget and you have uh, stuff coming up and down, just uh, scale those on the Z uh, at zero and you should be good to go. Okay, so now we are ready to project this image onto our UVs. So let's go ahead and go to UV editing and then adjust our 3D view here. Let's go into camera mode here. I'm going to deselect everything and let's come over and take a look at our UV maps that we have. Let's clean this up a little bit here. So the texture paint 2, you can see this is our final UV map and texture paint. So I want to keep that. Um, this one was uh, what you saw at the end of the last video. Uh, what I did after the video is I just resized this and repainted that so that I can um, have a little bit better resolution there. 
So um, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this one. I don't need that anymore. And then our seams to this is where the texture was stretching. So I don't need that one anymore either. And then this is the original that comes with the cylinder when we first added in. I don't need this one either. Going to get rid of that. So we basically got rid of everything except for the clean flat UV map. And I'm actually going to change this to flat for the name. Create a copy going to say flat BK for backup. And that's in case I accidentally project uh, using my flat, which I've done before. And it's just a pain trying to get it back. So then I'm going to make another duplicate and name this projection. And this is going to be the UV map that we are going to project from our camera view. So make sure you're in edit mode, select all of your geometry, U to unwrap, and then select project from view. And now you can see we have projected our UVs that look exactly, well, almost exactly like our perspective here in the 3D view. And if I disable our overlays and move our UV map, you can see that it is being projected on our object. Now, of course, our UVs here look squished, and that's just because our aspect ratio here is different from the 512 by 512 image that we're on. So let's just go ahead and select our TP photo, scroll out, and now you can see our UVs match uh, exactly the way our geometry matches to our image. But of course, uh, we're still seeing the texture that we had before, so let's go to our material tab here, and the base color, instead of texture three, we're gonna select our image, of course, our photo, and now you can see that our photo is being projected onto our object, but it is only being projected from this one view and one angle. If I rotate out of camera mode, you can see that the illusion is broken when uh, you can see this texture wrapping around our object really weird. And that's just because we have overlapping UVs here. So the top is overlapping the back faces, uh, the front is overlapping the bottom faces and back faces and inside. So that is why you get this result here. But our object still doesn't actually have its own texture. Uh, this is just an illusion of this image being projected onto our object from the camera view. What we want to do is we want to extract from this image and paste it onto another placeholder image so that we can save our own texture map in order to then apply it to our object. So essentially what we want to do is we want to use the projection UV map to paste onto our flat UV map and save that out as an image. Just as a reminder, I went over this concept in the last video, so go check that out if you haven't seen it, but that is what we're about to do in this video. So let's make sure our flat UV map is selected and then it's also the active render. Let's make sure that we are in UV sync selection mode and then come over to texture paint. I'm going to adjust everything over here like I need. And if you still don't see these UVs, just come up to view and then check display texture paint UVs. If you don't have a black placeholder image, I would go ahead and create one of those now. Uh, you can create it from here or you can come out here and click this button to create a new image. Then I'm going to select the clone brush here and at the very top of my active tool, you can see the mode is single image and we have our placeholder, which is this image here, this black image, and we're using our flat UV map, which is this right here. So this is our destination. This is what we're painting onto and the destination is over here on the left. And then if you scroll down, I'm just going to close this for a second and then click clone from paint slot, open that up. And where it says source clone image, you want to load our TP photo in that. Then we want to change our source clone UV map to our projection. So this is our source. We're taking it from the photo. If we go into our camera mode, we're taking it from the photo here and our UV projection here. And then we're pasting it up here to our destination, which is our destination here. So now I'm going to adjust my brush here, the fall off. I'm going to just make that a strong fall off here. And then way down at the bottom, 
your options here. Make sure you uncheck occlude and backface culling if you don't already have those unchecked. Now be careful, you want to check these again once we start tweaking things um, on the image because without these selected, you're going to paint through all of the geometry. But that's what we want to do right now, so let's go ahead and adjust our brush size and start painting. And as you can see, we've painted most of it. Now we've missed the blind spots here on the side, so we're just going to rotate that and make sure we get everything in there. So there we go. We have now successfully extracted the texture from the projection and pasted it onto our flat UV map. So let's go ahead and take a look at this here. Let's uh, disable our display. And you can see that um, this isn't really what we want, but, but it's a start. We, you know, we've got it flat, we've got it laid out, but uh, what we need to do is we need to change our projection a little bit so that it has a better result. So let's come back over to UV editing. And with our sync selection still enabled, I'm just going to select this island here by pressing L. Of course, we have to be in face select mode to do that. So, And then I'm going to come over here and select our projection UV map and our selection is still intact and then I'm going to make a copy of our projection so that we still have our projection to fall back on if we need to. Projection 2 and our projection 2 is what we want to change. So I'm going to hover my mouse over here and U to unwrap. And you can see the unwrap is not entirely straight um, and that doesn't really matter for my purposes here but just in case it does for yours I'll show you how to straighten this. And this is also thanks to CG Matter too. This is awesome. So um, I'm just going to find one of these uh, rectangles here that are the straightest. I'm going to uncheck our sync selection here. And then I think this one looks good here. So I'm just going to select the pairs on the side, scale those on the X to zero. And uh, I'm just going to turn off that proportional editing too. Uh, same with these si this side here zero and then the pairs on the top and the bottom we're going to scale those on the y uh, to zero all right so now we have a perfectly square rectangle that doesn't even make sense perfectly straight rectangle and uh, then we're going to go back into face select mode make sure our face is selected and active. So just click on it once and then right click, follow active quads. And now we have a straight UV island. And then we can go ahead and just select this whole thing, rotate it 90 degrees, uh, scale it down. And I'm gonna try to keep it, uh, the proportions the same, uh, although it doesn't matter a whole lot because this is just the inside. And so because I have this little brown part visible here, uh, it's actually pretty easy. I'm just going to position it right over those numbers. And you can see what's happening over here in our 3D view is that is unwrapped it just like we want inside there. And it's not very good resolution per se, but uh, it is the inside of the toilet paper, so it doesn't really matter to me a whole lot. Okay, so next, uh, let's go ahead and select everything here, and what we want to do is select the bottom UVs here. So I'm just going to uh, Alt select here. Now I'm selecting the bottom because the top is already finished. We've already got the top aligned like it should be. And uh, we're going to do the same thing with the bottom. If we bring these up to the top here. So I'm just going to go ahead and align this to the top. Okay, something like that and select everything here. And the last thing we need to do is the outside, but we don't want the whole outside. We just want the back faces because the front faces are already aligned. So to do that, uh, actually the very first thing we need to do is clear that seam because we don't want to unwrap two pieces of the back. So let's, um, if I disable the sharp, enable the seams, let's find that seam in the back here. Um, I'm going to go into edge select, select that edge, right click, clear seam. Let's go into camera mode and deselect everything, face select mode, 
and drag a box to select all of our front faces here. Let's go to the flat projection so that we can see what we have selected and then turn on our sync selection. So now if you see everything here selected, that means you're in some mode, maybe x-ray or wireframe, that you've selected the whole object. Now you don't want that. So make sure you're in solid shaded mode and not in x-ray mode so that when you click and drag, you are just selecting the faces that are facing the camera. So now I'm going to press Control i to invert my selection. And then over here, I'm just going to circle select by pressing C and then middle clicking to remove the bottom stuff here from our selection. Right click to exit the tool. And now we just have those back faces selected. So we don't want to unwrap here because we're still on our flat UV map. So let's go back to our projection two and then U to unwrap. And there we go. So now we need to position this. I need to see which of these sides is the top and the bottom. Um, let's get rid of or hide our seams there for a moment. And let's uh, select these vertices here. And those are the bottom vertices there. So I need to rotate it negative 90 degrees. Uh, but I'm going to uncheck sync selection now and then select all of these. Rotate it negative 90. And now we can come in here and reposition our UVs. Okay, so I think that is good enough. Let's turn on our sync selection there. And we've got a lot of messed up UVs, or it looks like it. But if you come over here and disable your overlays, now we have a little bit cleaner of a projection there. We're going to have to clean some of this up, of course, but we've already made it much easier for us. So let's make sure our flat UV map is selected and is the active render. Let's make sure sync selection is enabled. Let's come over to texture paint and let's adjust our views here a little bit. I'm going to get rid of that toolbar by pressing T and then let's display our UVs here. Come over to our active tool all the way up. Make sure we're painting onto our placeholder with our flat UVs, which we are, and then we're painting from our photo using our, not our projection, but our new updated projection to map. And now let's start painting. But you see nothing happens or something happens, but not very much. And that's because uh, we don't have the whole thing selected here. We just have these faces selected and we are in paint mask mode with only the faces selected are painted onto. So I'm just going to uncheck that because we want to paint on to everything. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint again. And remember, uh, I have occlude and back face culling turned off. So I'm painting through the geometry. And as I do that, now we have a much, much cleaner image. If I hide my UVs here, look at that that it, we are getting somewhere now. Of course, we still have to fix these, but that's easy enough with what we've done before with our stencils. So what you see me doing here, I've already shown in the stencil paint tutorial. So if you haven't seen that yet, go back and check that out. But essentially I'm just taking a photo and using it as a stencil to paint onto our object. And I'm using it to cover up those seams that we had from our initial texture extraction. Now it's important to remember that if you are stencil painting, you probably want to make sure under your options that occlude and backface culling are checked because if these are unchecked, that means you're going to be painting through the mesh onto the other side of the geometry, which could have results that you don't like. And so you're probably going to forget this. I forget this, but if you're getting some funky results, just try to remember to go and make sure these two things are checked. Another reminder here is up in our brushes you can actually duplicate brush settings so i've got different settings for lighten darken paint and then my paint soft settings and that's just so you don't have to keep coming down here and changing the fall off in the cursor and all of that stuff too and the lighten and the darken brushes i use to try to even out the lighting in the texture so you don't have arbitrary harsh shadows on your texture and for these two brushes i use the linear light blend mode and then if you click on the color swatch if you change the value to 0.5, that's going to be neutral. So it's not going to do anything. Anything above 0.5 is going to lighten and anything below 0.5 is going to darken your image. 
Now I know there are better ways out there to equalize the lighting in an image, like using a high pass filter and stuff. And you can do this with Photoshop, GIMP, and even in the compositor in Blender. And I tried to mess around with that, but it wasn't getting the results that I wanted to. So I still have to research that a little bit more. The method I'm using here is just a quick and dirty way to try to equalize that image. This is something that you could literally spend hours on. So I'm not going to spend hours on it. Instead, I'm going to save out our image. So before you reload or change anything or save Blender or exit Blender, make sure you save a copy of your image. So I'm going to name this uh, TP Texture Projection. And that just can be a JPEG at 75%. Save as. Okay, so let's go to our layout and in solid shaded mode, go to flat and texture. This is the wrong texture, obviously. So let's go to our material tab and change TP photo and open up our newly created texture projection. We now have our final texture map pasted onto our object and we've extracted this from one single photo and that is the power of projection mapping of course you can make this look uh, better than it is but that is the process that you would go through now I since we're done with the projection I can go ahead and clean up uh, we've got a really misshapen roll of toilet paper now so I'll just go in uh, top mode and to edit mode here and then just kind of reshape some things okay so something like this uh, it's a little bit more of a toilet paper roll and maybe I could uh, do a little bit better but I, I just I kind of want it a little bit misshapen um, to give it some character you know okay so that is it so I hope this is helpful it gives you some ideas of how you can extract uh, textures from pictures and paste them onto your objects that you make. So now it's time to add some lighting and bake some shadows onto our object. So stay tuned as always and you will see me in the next one.